Pokemon has always been a franchise about choices, connection, and how the world delivers those two to the player. Choices define every action we take, and the connection with our Pokemon is formed through the hardships we face. Pass, <laughs> dude. Shit. The level design throws us both into these hell holes and then spits us out the other side, stronger, smarter, and closer to our Pokemon. Choices let us show our intelligence, and connection gives our journey meaning. These are the three core drivers of Pokemon. So to make a game without these core drivers is to completely break the Pokemon formula and everything that has made Pokemon, Pokemon. Legends Arceus breaks these. PLA is the biggest change Pokemon has ever seen. Being able to walk around and see these creatures in their natural habitat and then being able to interact with them is a complete game changer. Literally. These bit do it in real time and I can catch them. Game of the year. Screw Elden Ring. But despite breaking the formula and being the kind of change Pokemon desperately needs, this game continues the modern trend at Game Freak of taking one step forward straight into a wall. For every fantastic new feature it adds, it removes another pivotal piece of the Pokemon puzzle all the while carrying all the unresolved problems that have plagued this series for years now. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with graphics, all right? I know, you're thinking that, but we're not even gonna bring it up in this one, right? Graphics are not the reason why Pokemon Legends Arceus is so bad. We've got bigger fish to fry than that. Starting with choice. Choice has always acted as the main gameplay of Pokemon. Pokemon is low key the defo of player expresso. They allow each player to create a handcrafted team that reflects exactly who they are as a person. The Mint Maxer will study the gym leaders in Elite Four while spending hours to find the best Pikachu with a perfect dumpy and big EVs, while pumping that yellow prick with protein shakes until Crash Awake and his dumb fish friends have to be taken home in an ambulance. Others will pick Chimchar because it looks cute. But to say that is to lie to you, because the amount of choices in a Pokemon game rival the seats in a stadium. Pokemon. <laughs> you choose a starter, you pick its moves, you catch other Pokemon to give it friends, or you grind for 10 hours to get a pink one. You choose which Pokeballs to catch it with, you catch another one because it had the wrong nature. You give them items to hold in battle, because going into battle with two hands free is stupid. Hold this magnet, Chimchar. You organize an assortment of status, physical, and special moves to give you the best chance at inflicting torment on the local wildlife. You decide which Pokemon to level up first. You decide whether to evolve them or not because Raichu has dumb ears and looks stupid. You continue to pick their moves while choosing old ones to discard. Catch even more Pokemon while repeating steps one through five. Even God's sweet earth has choices. Look at this route. Walking into it provides you with two pivotal choices. You can walk in the grass where the feral beasts roam or run the roads and risk encountering a non-escapable trainer battle. <laughs> Certainly sounds better than getting hit by a car. Wild Pokemon attack randomly, but trainer battles are harder, but provide you more experience and money, which lets you go gamble in the casino as a five-year-old. All of these choices breathe immersion into the 2D world, because while it doesn't look real, it gives you enough choices and actions to feel real. It's why most good RPGs go for the RP over the G. Graphics, you know what I'm saying? But Legends Arceus has a lack of choices, or choices that are cool, but don't affect gameplay. Clothing, Pog, three kinds of Pokeballs. Not Pog. Oh my god, I left the avocado socks on. I'm so sorry. Let, oh my god. That's better. That's fixed. This lack of choice can be seen best in PLA's best feature, open world catching. This new gameplay is a ditto of the wild area and safari zones, and despite being initially quite fun, disappoints me in the same way both of them do. After the initial fun, it falls so flat on its face because lack of safari zone, a lack of complexity on both sides, makes the catching so fucking repetitive. Game Freak gives you three primary tools and the environment as tools for catching Pokemon, which sounds grouse until you realize that the environment is just Assassin's Creed patches of grass and there's only three kinds of Pokeballs, far, medium, and close. While the 30 different kinds of baits sound cool, it's rare you ever need to use anything other than an Oran or a Jazzberry. And even with things like the Smoke Bomb and the Mud Ball, this doesn't really inspire much creativity as it clearly just reinforces the clear routine to catching every single Pokemon. If it's far away, throw a Feather Ball or battle it. If it's not far away, use bait, sneak behind it and throw a Heavy Ball or battle it. You see, the game has this routine because both you and the wild Pokemon are both limited in the ways you can interact with each other, leading to gameplay that always plays out exactly the same. Choices on the Pokemon side are A, get angry, B, run away. Why is there no C friendly option? I kind of want to be like a princess from Disney. Complex choices on the enemy side are just as important as complex choices on our side because that impacts the choices we make and the decisions we make and makes you play the game harder. 
Mash them buttons, man. Just mash them. Besides legendaries, the wild Pokemon only ever get two moves to attack. And since they move like the Michelin Man, they're never really a threat. And most of their attacks are either A, just charging at you, or B, a slow moving beach volleyball. And like, I don't mean to brag, but I live in a land home to 21 of the 25 most dangerous Ekans in the entire world. If I've learned how to dodge roll an inland Taipan. I, I can handle low punny getting an extra kick. To me, the old turn-based catching felt more dynamic despite it being limited by turns, just because it has more choice. There were status effects, different kinds of Pokeballs, like timer balls, items that change catching, and things Pokemon could do to be a giant thorn in the grass, like just explode and ruin everything. There's no time to whittle down on Abra's health since they're cowards, but a quick ball gets to cheat since it's super effective on the first turn. Maybe use Shockwave to paralyze it. Or give your Pokemon a shadow tag so it has to sit there and get smacked in the head by Ultra Balls until it gives in and becomes my friend. These choices are cool because they're impacted by every other choice you've made in the game. Shockwave requires you to have an electric type and Shadow Tag is an item you've got to find. But you'll notice that these strategies aren't available in PLA because one of the biggest changes to PLA is the complete removal of held items and abilities, which I adamantly hate and would destroy a small nation to bring back. Abilities are kind of more important to battling, but using an Arcanine with Intimidate and Will-O-Wisp is a really good way to whittle down Wounded Out Legendary who's got all this health and you can get them into those slow red numbers with Will-O-Wisp, but also um, uh, Intimidate's really good for stopping them just, you know, just Superman punching your entire team. And also Burn's gonna be doing the same thing as well. So it's, um. You basically turn these roided out little freaks into little, little wet noodles. Little wet, I slap, I shouldn't have done that. Little wet noodles. You turn them into little wet noodles. You know, what the, what the, what the. These mechanics are deep and there's so many consequences you need to consider when developing up your plan. Like even just picking a status effect has pros and cons. Although I still don't know what Freeze does. For PLA, in the same way you throw out a Pokemon to smash some rocks, why don't I want to throw them out to use Stun Spore or Earthquake to knock, them or knock the enemy guy around a little bit? Come on! Or how about adding in some more specific tools to catching, like a lasso to wrangle down those flying types? Yeah! But you can still use a turn based battling, so <laughs> how's that? <laughs> Where's abilities? Where's held items? What the fuck is this? Yeah, I think it's important we talk about battles because. <laughs> I've made it so much worse. A small complaint, but how do you ever get a good view during these fights? I go this way, and the moves are blocking the screen. I go this way, and now my big dumb head's in the way. I stand back here, and now it just, it just looks pathetic. Get, get these stupid fucking dumb girls out of here. The biggest changes to battling are no abilities, no held items, and this chaotic new turn system. Held items and abilities add a lot of subtle depth to these games, but when I brought it up, you might have been like, eh, well, it's not that important, strange man yelling at me through the screen, but no, stop right there. Think about how many strategic choices have been removed from the game because of these two features. <laughs> there are 266 different abilities in Pokemon and none of them are in this game. Not even including the 355 different held items and berries you can no longer use. Look at this table I made, it's blue. Fucking blue, just like my soul. Levitate completely nullifies ground type moves, making it a pretty good counter for the disgustingly strong ground type. But giving a ground type an iron ball lets it hit Pokemon with Levitate and both of them combined is a weird strategy. One of my favorite strats is using a Ferrothorn with Rocky Helmet and Giga Drain. Attacking it gets you hit by its Rocky Helmet, causing you damage, and then you also get damage from its ability, Iron Barbs. You see all that damage you just did to me, and you took damage for trying to do to me? Guess what? Giga Drain, all gone. It's such a unique strategy that is only possible through using abilities and held items. Without Iron Barbs and a Rocky Helmet, Ferrothorn is just as slow as balls, grass, and steel type. And this goes for all Pokemon as well. Without abilities and held items, all this extra character is completely gone from the game, resulting in every Pokemon playing out pretty much the same. This is also due to one other factor, and I'm gonna be honest, I kinda lied to you before, because there's one other thing they removed from goddamn this game. The moves. PLA only has 180 moves in the game. Meanwhile, the previous entry, Sword and Shield, which everyone thinks is doo doo and is, had 826. The worst part of all of this is it's not like they've replaced all this, all this choice and beautiful strategy and depth with more choice, but different depth and, and, and Pog Champ. No. 
It's just less. Like the new light and strong star, which for one is just the glim glim I talked about in my other video, by the way. It's such a boring substitution for actual con, like actual depth. It's pathetic, I hate it. I <laughs> the skill ceiling of battles have just been completely Draco Meteor, Harry Potter style, and this will definitely not be in the next game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's been nice to meet you, but I will not go on another date with you. You hideous monster. The lack of choices everywhere means that the moment to moment gameplay is always the same and won't change on subsequent playthroughs. And even on the first playthrough, you're likely to get so bored because you have to do the exact same thing over and over again for around just over 70 hours on average. Because to get the real ending, you have to catch every single one of these little fellas in order to catch God. But let me tell you, that is the most tedious grind in all of Pokemon. The time space distortion Pokemon are completely RNG, meaning even if one does appear, it might not have the Pokemon you want, then you've got to wait another 15 minutes for the universe to hopefully rip ass again, only to hope that it has the exact Pokemon you need, and only hope that you can get it before it despawns, dies, or you get killed. And by the end, you'll be so burnt out on the innovative new gameplay of hide, bait, and back shot. But by God, at least I can change my clothes. Call me Luffy, because I look bitchin' in this straw hat. Oh my God, this guy's insufferable. The game isn't even about battling. But every boss battle involves taking turns beating each other up, and the ending of the main story and post game both have full six Mon trainer battles, with the final, final battle being regarded in many disgusting cesspools as one of the best battles in Pokemon ever. Deep mechanics don't matter because Pokemon is a game made for children. No, it's not. It might partially be, but games made for kids wouldn't have so much nostalgia for games that were made before they were even born. This whole game is complete nostalgia for Gen 4. Games released in 2006. Shut the fuck up. Choices and the depth of those choices are what made Pokemon so goddamn addictive and fun. So by doing all these things to either limit choices, remove choices, or make choices not matter in a game requiring you to do the exact same thing over and over again, you've just made me never want to play this game ever again. And I don't think I'm the only one either. Look at the goddamn Twitch charts for Pokemon Legends Arceus. That's Point Crow playing a completely different game. <laughs> like half of the viewers in this category aren't even there for Pokemon Legends Arceus. Ah! Just thinking about having to do that Pokedex again is giving me shell shock, oh God. But choices are not the only thing to change in PLA and to say that would be to lie to you because Pokemon Legends Arceus is the first game ever to make Pokemon not matter at all. One of the core drivers of Pokemon is the slow character development of you and your party. You start as strangers in an unknown land who can't tell a Starly from a Marley. You're a noob. But you persevere and get stronger. Pokemon games are a power fantasy, except it's your Pokemon that gets stronger, but in turn, it's your choices and decisions that make them stronger. But by eliminating the challenge through forced EXP share, telling you which moves are super effective all the time, and removing so much choice, you no longer connect to your Pokemon through playing the game. Because you're not even really playing the game anymore. Control Freak seems to think that everyone who plays games wants their entire game to be a tutorial. Which is ironic because tutorials are universally known as the boring path that gets skipped and then I don't know which button pulls out the bow until like 10 hours in. Video game are kind of like school and boss battles is kind of like exam? The point of a boss battle is to test how much the game has taught you so far. And if you haven't been paying attention, you're going to detention in the game over room. <laughs> yeah, it's next to the science lab. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of smell like Updog in here. That's all made redundant when Game Freak goes, ah, oh, yeah, that, you, you, see, you see that giant time and space god? Eat shit to fighting types. Like, hey, hey, I'm not saying you should, but if you want to win this fight, you should totally use Muck Punch. It makes it so hard to care about any of these fucks because even on the rare account that I get to use them, I'm not even using them. I'm just seeing which ones are super effective. And it doesn't feel earned either. I wasn't the one that put in all the hard work learning the typings and the advantages of the fighting types. No, Big Mama did all the hard work and now I have to see a therapist for imposter syndrome. Even if you already know these Pokemon, you might not know every strength and weakness a Pokemon has without Googling it or referring to your type sheet you got from the Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver walkthrough guide. You got exactly eight years and one day after the great tragedy. <laughs> just telling me their weakness removes the battle from 
boss battle. It's a test that you can never fail. It's like those silly quick time events. If you're gonna tell me what to do and exactly how to do it and exactly when to do it, what's the point? You may as well just make it a cutscene and save us both some time. Again, more of the school metaphor. We like learning because it hacks a very primal part of our brains that lack personal progression. Leveling up is often an easy to identify visual form of that. Think like bigger number, me strong. But learning is another form of that. The frenzied Pokemon battles make you learn attacks and attack timings and when to dodge, like the Ru uh, Arcanine's running back and forth attack. Which is why it was way more fun to fight the battles like this and not even use the turn-based system. Because this way actually provides a form of progression to our brain, which makes brain happy. Yes, grinding for levels always sucks, but PLA doesn't make you an active participant in your own progression. The forced always on EXP share means that you never have to use your Pokemon ever for them to get stronger. And Control Freak always tells you which moves are super effective, so you never have to learn anything about any Pokemon either. Yes, I have the controller. Yes, I throw Heavy Ball. But I'm always kept in an arm's length away from ever immersing myself in the game and getting all dirty with it. Rolling around in the mud and just, just loving the game. <laughs> <laughs> someone who's played three hours versus someone who's played 30 hours are always going to be at the same skill level because after learning the hieroglyph for super effective, you've basically got a PhD in handling balls. Control Freak doesn't trust that I will have fun with its own game, which ironically has strangled the life out of any fun I could have had with this game. Which is pretty ironic considering that one game that came out a few months ago that doesn't hold your hand as hold your hand every five seconds and is universally loved for not doing that. Also, I really like it. I put like 500 hours into it. <laughs> the loathsome YouTuber standing in his shed with his mouth next to a, to, to a phallic object to which he could suckle on to receive nourishment from his fans. And seeing that game do so well by not making the mistakes that this beloved franchise does it makes me really sad and I just... Oh my god, look at this Shinx mask. Let's get it, bitch. But every game has gameplay, and to say that gameplay is what has ruined Pokemon Legends Arceus would be to lie to you. Because every good game is a Last of Us clone, and Pokemon has always been a franchise about zombies. The story of PLA has you talk to random idiots all the time who do nothing and mean nothing, and their only purpose is to just talk. It takes every trope from the older games, but unlike the innovative new gameplay, does nothing to change them, except making them more uninteresting and more unnecessary. Like this person, who sits in this chair and talks. Every mission plays out exactly the same. The game will have this person spend five minutes telling you all about the mission, and then you go meet with this person who goes and tells you more about the mission for another five minutes. <laughs> then you go to the mission marker and waste another five minutes being monologued at by a five-year-old this time. <laughs> now you've got the info you need, you go back to the village and they talk for another five minutes. Now go back to the five-year-old and listen to the monologue some more about how you're our only hope and friendship is magic. And, uh, oh wait, I can actually play the mission now. And it's only been like 25 minutes. <laughs> more monologue! The story is weighed down by so much mindless drivel and every area just repeats itself with this happening every time. You could realistically cut out 70% of the dialogue in this game and nothing changes. Except I have a better time. The big reason for this is one, the writers of Game Freak suck. But two, because the game has no idea what it wants to do. Let's think about the story for a second. You wake up, dropped out of the sky by God, go join the Pokemon research team to help humans and Pokemon get over their fear of each other and get along. So you go beat up and kidnap thousands of Pokemon, throw them on a farm, hang out with the Hisu tribes, throw bags of dirt at very angry Karens, catch God, catch God again, and then go catch God. The story is so messy with the complete lack of focus because it wants to do all these things and be a story about a stranger in a foreign land and about people discovering Pokemon but people are also friends with Pokemon but also the land is being ripped apart by time and space gods and trust me one of these things is more interesting than the others ever since going to 3d the games feel like they have so much dialogue they just go on and on about the most uninteresting shit in a game where living balloons kidnap children how can you not find anything more interesting to say. Because of all of this crap, the game is padded out with so much talking. I hate these characters so much. They don't add anything, they don't provide challenge, they don't give you any quests unless it's some bullshit Ubisoft collect five herbs type of shit. They don't give you items, they don't give you upgrades, they don't have a story, they don't do anything except talk. 
and they never stop. The worst part of the characters in PLA is that they're mostly just boring versions of other better characters that have been put into the game because again, nostalgia. You're getting deja vu because I sure am. <laughs> it's also so hard to take the mountains of dialogue seriously because the game has no voice lines at all. So all you can do is sit there and watch these GameCube ass looking dudes, the fucking facial animations of someone with a neural degenerative disease, talk to you like a baby and over explain everything at least three times. Or if you're really lucky, you get to hear about the petty squabbles of the Hisu tribes. I've just been dropped out of the sky by God. I don't care about the local politics. The best way to sum up the characters in this game is the Gen 5 Subway guy. This dude was also sent back in time by Arceus for some reason that's never addressed, but guess what? Instead of being sent back home to his friends and family, <laughs> he just sits there. Cause I guess Arceus just loves being a dickhead. Like, oh, you love your wife and kids? Oh wow, yeah, really. Well, guess what? You're staying here forever because you use fucking coal transport, dipshit. Should have rode bikes or something. But there is one part of the story that I've conveniently avoided talking about until now because it's actually really good. The whole storyline with Volo is one of the best things Game Freak has ever done. He acts as this mentor figure who trains you in battle and teaches you the backshot move, which is the smartest piece of writing Game Freak's maybe ever done. But oh wait, he's actually evil. Holy shit, I am completely caught off guard right now which then crescendos into one of the most brutal boss fights in all of Pokemon. But ain't that a little hypocritical? Control Freak pulls a complete 180 and makes a super hard boss fight after spending their entire lives making these games as easy as possible, but then also doesn't let you heal your Pokemon before pulling out Giratina. What? It's almost like difficulty's kind of fun. Hard Game Freak. You dipshit. My opinion is that the game should have just been about uh, collecting the plates and then having Volo steal your lunch money. Because the tribes and the research team stuff never end up really mattering to the player's main problem of God kidnapped me, I'm scared and lost and I want my mummy. <laughs> Make it so you join the research team so you can get exclusive data on the local fugitives. After getting those, you need to go to the tribes to get their ancient wisdom on making flavored bath bombs. You can even make it that both the tribes let you find Pokemon exclusive to the original Diamond and Pearl games. Then make the actual missions like Monster Hunter type beats where you've got to prepare and then scout out their locations and hunt them down, but also add in a little bit of survival horror stuff. Because I'm pretty sure a guard chomp would fuck up a 10 year old. <laughs> <laughs> make bait more important, make different types of balls important, and actually make me craft the bombs. What's the point of crafting if I don't get to craft the bombs? Like, come on, bombs are my top five favorite things to craft. The current basic ass missions repeat themselves for every area with you going to a new place, finding the frenzied Pokemon, calming them down, and then moving on to the next one. All with a little monologue sprinkled in between. And by that, I mean a bucket loads. Despite the boss battles being fun, without variety, it isn't worth trudging through the same mission structure and hours of dialogue to get there. It starts like, oh wow, a new area. And then by the third, you're like, say one more word I fucking do. Better missions, less dialogue, more Volo, less tribes, less village, equals better story. Better story, less XP share, less handholding equals better connection, which equals better piece of interactive media. Because if I wanted to watch someone else play the game, I'd go to my neighbor's house who loves Markiplier. On Markiplier Mondays, we play Five Nights at the Emergency Room. It's a drinking game. To cap off this section, I think it's important to talk about just how popular Nuzlocks are. The void of difficulty in modern Pokemon games has meant people have resorted to artificially making the games harder. There are numerous YouTube channels that get millions of views only playing Pokemon Nuzlocks. There's clearly a market for this kind of thing. Some people want a rewarding experience, not just this watered down crap. So why don't we have cards? The lack of connection in the gameplay and story made me completely uninvested for most of my playthrough. But there's something else wrong with this game, because to say that lack of connection is the only thing wrong with this game would be to lie to you. Because story doesn't matter to Pokemon. Pokemon is a video game, and the gameplay is the only part that matters. Damn it. The real problem is the open world. Play the music.
Pokemon games have always used their world to force the player into tough situations. I don't know why, they're just kind of weird like that. But these situations force the player to make hard choices and then bond with their Pokemon. But PLA's world is the most different to any Pokemon game ever. Gone are the days of handcrafted maps and backtracks full of zoo bats. Because the open world is here, baby. The open world features Pokemon living in areas that relate to the character of their species. You find Geodudes next to rocks or Buizels next to rivers, letting you draw logical conclusions about where you would find other Pokemon. Look, it's a water Pokemon in the water. Is that a dead body? I can see Pokemon without sitting through a 15 second animation. 10 year old me is punching his scooter right now. When I was 10, I um, I tail whipped my scooter into my dog. I felt really bad about it. The world has materials you can farm using the Pokemon you've captured. Sometimes reality gets kind of freaky and you can catch rare Pokemon in a time space distortion. Hot. Sexy. Handsome. What the fuck is that? You can use mounts to access new areas and as the game progresses, you come back to previous areas and access once inaccessible areas using your new mounts. Yes, game free queen shit. Pokemon outbreaks give you a better chance at snagging a shiny. No, I said snagging, not shagging you sick freak. Oh. I think that's it. I think that's pretty much everything good with um, the open world. The open world is bad, but that isn't really surprising. Open world games have a really difficult task because you're basically trying to make an empty field fun. Try spending five hours on a farm and see how much fun you have. We've got our own brand of Game Boys out in the country. It's called Two Sticks and a Rock. This is the same reason why there are so many bland open world games, because how do you make an empty field fun? You don't, you just cram it full of shit. Making an open world fun either requires systems that create fun or inversely, 300 hours of tiny little details and stories and little pings on the map. But there's also a catch, realism. As soon as you start pretending that this isn't a scripted video game where everything is planned and you're on rails, you need to start applying that logic why are there no children? Why are the NPCs having two separate conversations? Is that really? Todd Howard? It's awfully chilly out in this open world. Maybe I should gear up a little bit. Montage time. Sorry, I got kind of cold. Just gonna put some, put some warmer clothes on, you know? PLA's open world is there exclusively to serve you. In PLA, you are the only thing that exists or matters. Pokemon stand in their idle animations, just waiting for you to catch them. Each Pokemon has a designated spot for them to idle around in, and they will spawn in this spot every single time. NPCs stare blankly waiting to say their one line for you, like they're auditioning for the real game. The fact that no NPC ever walks around outside of a cutscene. The lack of scenery, the lack of nests, the lack of puzzles, the lack of side quests, the lack of towns, the lack of anything to distract me from the fact that this is an empty field. This is PLA's biggest problem. At its best, Game Freak's grand open world equates to people and Pokemon standing in a field. A lot of these problems could be ignored in older Pokemon games because again, RP over the G, you know what I'm saying? But this badly hurts the gameplay of PLA as so much of it revolves around the open world. And again, because they've removed all this other stuff, this is the only thing you can do now. Completing the Pokedex in a game like this should be a fun researcher on a safari kind of thing where you gotta sniff the dirt to find their nests and steal their children. But no, you just walk around until you find one and then you never have to find another one ever again because they will always spawn in the exact same spot every single time. I first noticed this in the Boglands when I spotted an Onyx for the first time, chilling next to two stun cats. After sitting through some monologues at HQ, I entered back into the area and oh shit, here they are again. As an experiment, I went to this spot 19 times and 19 out of the 19 times I saw this onyx, these two stun cats, and this hippo. Every single time. And this applies to every area too. Goodbye here, bronze or here. Th there's a ponyta on this exact spot. Every single fucking time. Riolu there, turn around and whoa, what a muscle guy. Totally didn't expect that. I'm kidding. 
He's here every fucking day. And I get you want some kind of consistency to it, but it's not like the wild Rilu can be found across the mountains of Hisu. No, it's the wild Rilu can be found in these six three by three meter parking bays without fail, exactly 100% of the time guaranteed, or your money back. Which makes me acutely aware that, psst, hey, this is a video game. And these are models in a video game that are coded to spawn in these exact spots 100% of the time, unless it spawns in a vol version. So if, I, I guess that's like 99.85% of the time, square root the fucking curvature of Low Punny's ass. Yes. Other than the few times it forces you to actually catch Pokemon in order to rank up, catching and battling Pokemon are so separate from everything else you do. You're never pulled into these situations where the level design forces you to engage with the gameplay. Like, I don't know, maybe putting this Onyx here instead of here, so I actually have to square up and deal with it instead of ignoring it like an annoying relative's emails. Auntie Janice, I'm not interested in your pyramid scheme. Which is ironic because if they did that, they wouldn't have to tell you to go out and catch Pokemon do this stuff because it would just be a part of the natural progression of the game. In older Pokemon games, Pokemon and trainers are constantly blocking your path, forcing you to actually play the game and learn typings and different matchups. Old Pokemon games have masterfully crafted levels that feel like pinball machines with labyrinths of flowing paths that fling you from town to town, along the way providing unique challenge through its trainers, wild Pokemon, and the puzzles in its level design. Every second in these games is spent propelling you along your journey towards becoming the strongest trainer there is. The level design is consistently rewarding you for doing anything as every action has some inherent value to your overall goal. Exploring gets you new held items or moves to teach your Pokemon. Meanwhile, that patch of grass might hold a counter to the next gym or just a bit of experience. And kicking Joey's ass teaches you that your sweet little Butterfree belongs nowhere near a demented fire horse. Towns act as checkpoints while the routes act as training for the next gym. This is a beautifully woven system that is not appreciated enough. But the Pokemon in this game aren't made as obstacles. They're made as optional chores. No trainer battles and you get to choose if you even want to fight wild Pokemon. And getting different Pokemon doesn't matter because you barely use them and they all play the same now anyway. It has no hidden items, so exploring doesn't matter. A better system could be to add more traps like the jump scaring Geodudes and the rocks, but like, don't make it so obvious. Like ground types using dig to scurry around and then jump scare you or star raptors circling the skies looking for a 10 year old shaped snack to dive bomb and eat. There should be more trainer battles for variety's sake, but if they really insist on not doing that, make the level design force you to interact with the Pokemon and make it so you can't run away so easily. But also at that point, I kind of realized that I'm sort of just asking for trainer battles. <laughs> but if neither of those tickle your fancy, at least just make our wild Pokemon more useful in the open world. Either real time battles or let me use moves like shockwave or mean look outside of combat to make catching a bit more interesting. This would bring in all those elements while meshing the gameplay open world and me into a big old super fun while stopping the gameplay from getting stale so quickly. Right now, the only thing to do in the open world is catch Pokemon, but the wild Pokemon don't provide any meaningful interactions because their AI couldn't even pass a preschool spelling bee. While your choices for dealing with that are so basic that it never feels like you're this prodigy Pokemon catcher that everyone keeps saying you are, you catch three level five Bidoofs and they treat you like a messiah. The shallow level of interaction and the fact that they're optional made me spend a lot of time running away from Pokemon rather than interacting with them. But catching Pokemon is the only thing to do in this game because they've removed all this other stuff. But catching Pokemon is so basic and limited, it just gets boring unless all you care about are these little fireworks, that fun little sound effect and checking off at 70 plus hour to-do list. It's a Skinner box, wow, wow, wow. Or much more likely, nostalgia. I talked about this more in my other video, but modern Game Freak's core business model is nostalgia. My suspicion is that the open world was designed solely with this in mind. And I think this is why a lot of people don't care about the empty field and the like just miserably repetitive gameplay. Because they don't give a shit about the gameplay. They don't give a shit about actually playing a game. They just want that sweet, sweet little nostalgia. Because the nostalgia of seeing your childhood friends reminds you of better days before your dad ran away to Mexico and your mother started resenting you. Which sucks, because I actually want a fun game with deep mechanics worthy of spending 70 hours playing and $90 paying. If you want nostalgia, just go play the old games. Just do it. Anyway, back to the main point. Um, 
it's if, if you don't care about nostalgia, it's hard not to get bored playing this game because PLA has made the optional side objective of most other games its main objective, but without finding a way to make it not feel like unimportant repetitive side content. Completing the Pokedex is usually just some post-game filler, and it's still that. The gameplay just isn't good enough to make it compelling for most players over a 70 hour playthrough. Sorry, but it's not the 1950s. I don't wanna collect stamps with you, grandpa. And even worse, to completely complete the Pokedex, you have to do over a thousand more menial tasks with no reward again. What? Why do you do this? Why, Game Freak? Why? Tell me. The start of the game tricks you into thinking that this research shit is ever gonna be cool. But no, you're just doing chores. Yes, mom, I watched Weasel do three water pumps in a second. Oh, I just, I just want to finish this game up. No, no, come on. I, just give me a minute. No, don't turn the Wi-Fi off. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'll but to say the main objective in beating the game is the most important thing in PLA would be to lie to you. Because I'm sure the open world's got other stuff, right? In my other video, I talked about how empty the open world looked in the trailers, and I was unfortunately so much more right than I'd ever realized. No towns, no vendors, only one house, no meaningful NPCs, no random encounters, no safari zone slash athletics track kind of places. Only one region has any landmarks at all, which I don't even know what the fuck that is. What? What is? Is that a hand? Can someone fill me in on the lore on this hand? Who put it there? No times when you're rewarded for exploring because you found an item that makes your weasel squirt further. Why are there so many NPCs with side quests just sitting in the village? Put them out here and flourish this be just beautiful world. <laughs> That's like three frames per second. Speaking of which, the town is actually one of the cool elements in the game. I love how it grows with you as you progress through the story, but it would be so much cooler if that same logic was applied to the open world as well. I mean, it kind of makes more sense seeing your research result in more researchers going out and colonizing the wild. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the lightning round. I'm starting to lose my voice. There's way too much to cover in this video. Um, so I'm just gonna list them off rapid fire mode, but also I'm at an open mic night. <laughs> this thing on. Hello? Hello? Is this thing on? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? <laughs> Alpha Pokemon are kind of a waste of time. There's no difficulty anyway, so there's no point getting a better version of um, Piplop when Piplop's just there. They feel like crappy substitutes for real open world content. And we all know there'd be- uh, 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 We all know there'd be only one- uh, Fuck, this is a real open mic night, isn't it? <laughs> and we all know there'd only be one Alpha in the Animal Kingdom, and it, it'd be Licky Tongue. The like five trainer battles in the game, excluding the boss Pokemon, are way too easy. It, it, it feels like if you only get to eat ice cream once a year and then a bird poops on your head. Not being able to switch Pokemon after committing animal abuse is just less choices. And it just feels like a really lazy way to try and make it feel like it's real time battles. When it's not, it's still turn based and you suck at game design. You're not tricking me. <laughs> the battles where more than one Pokemon attack you are just plain on fun. It's like a Bukaki, but no one comes at me at the end. <laughs> That's fucking rancid. That's rancid. I used the bear like twice. Just seems like a waste, honestly. The inventory system is annoyingly expensive. I always felt like I had a full inventory despite never needing to use half of this shit. Nana berry is just banana spelt backwards. If there's gonna be so many different types of berries that uh, can be used as bait, at least make one of them like poison a Pokemon or, one, or a chili one that makes it run around all angry. Crafting Pokeballs is fun for a while, but I got really sick of farming rocks and acorns 40 hours into my Pokedex grind. Hustle baby, 4 a.m. You're breaking rocks, I'm licking cocks. We are not the same. Thank you for listening. Tips are appreciated. My wife left me. <laughs> In summary, PLA's open world is one that doesn't give you any stories, but also doesn't let you create any of your own. It has neither the systems to create fun nor pre-curated fun already in the game, which is why it feels so empty and hollow, because it was made boring. I've made a lot of claims throughout this video, and this one might be the boldest. I have lied to you. PLA's open world was not made to be boring. PLA's open world was made to be engaging and interesting but only under Game Freak's Dictonian Iron Fist. Now to help explain this complex argument, I've brought us a friend. This is Flippy the Smart Pencil, and he's gonna help us explain nothing. He's fucking dead. He's dead, and I just killed him. You see this? I'm not in the mood for fucking around anymore, all right? So you better listen close and listen well. 
If the biggest game your IP was attached to was a simple low effort mobile game, wouldn't you stop aspiring to make high quality, beautiful console games? Every human being ever can flick their thumbs, but what the heck freaking heck is a wonder guard? I'd argue this is why aspects like the held items and abilities are removed from the game. It would also be a lore thing, but hey, maybe it's a bit of both. But I don't really have a lot of evidence for that, and I just killed a man, so we need to wrap this up really quick, and I need to flee the country. So to blame PLA's failures on Pokemon Go isn't very academic of me, and would be incredibly fraudulent. So sorry, once again, I have lied to you, but it's kind of your fault for being such a gullible little bitch, isn't it? The reason for PLA's failures is the modern hype and review cycle. I know it sounds off topic, but just trust me, it's important. I'm here to guarantee that 90% of reviews on Legends Arceus in the first week hadn't even seen 30%, let alone fucking 80% of the content in this game. They either speedrun the main story or play just enough to get a review out because most reviews don't talk about how repetitive the game is or how butchered the battle system is or even mention Volo's storyline at all. Which is a problem because this game's a little bit like getting married. You meet, have a few laughs, take a walk on the beach, realize yes, this is love. You propose, have a lovely wedding and top it all off with a beautiful honeymoon, enjoying everything they have to offer. But marriage is a long thing, trust me, I know. That's coming from a guy who's been married seven times. After moving in together, you realize that that eggplant pasta they cooked on your first date is actually the only thing they know how to cook. And you're gonna have to eat eggplant pasta for the rest of your life. But if you've only played four hours of the game, you, you still think they're cooking fucking stromboli and shit, no. It's eggplant pasta and takeaway, that's it. For example, IGN talks about the removal of held items and abilities and says this, Legends Arceus isn't a complex game, but that complexity has been shifted into strategic approaches to encounters, team building, and fucking whatever the fuck else they say, I don't know, fuck. But fails to see how removing those features affects encounters, affects team building, and affects capturing Pokemon by making them less complex. And also not taking enough time to realize how uncomplex those systems are to begin with. This is like, if, if, if this is complex, wait till you see like what a calculator can do. E.g. haven't taken enough time to actually play and review the game. In other news, I found a really ironic and hilarious video titled Brutally Honest Pokemon Legends Arceus Review, where the first words uttered are Product provided by Nintendo. Which means the title probably should say a very nicely worded and very sugar-coated review because me and Nintendo have kind of got a thing going here and I don't want to screw that up. And guess what he says in the video? Basically nothing negative. After surveying 136 different reviews for this game, I heard the term, it is a good starting point 138 times. And this statement has been used for like the last four Pokemon games. Please stop saying this is a good starting point. Because it's not. Legends Arceus is the finished product. When do these stop being starting points and we actually get a good game? One of the other things I didn't really see anyone talking about was the removal of a multiplayer feature. And don't come at me now with any of that this is a spin-off game bullshit. Game Freak themselves no, said no, this is a mainline game. And also, this is priced at $90. That's a mainline game, motherfucker. Which is my biggest problem. If this was a $50 game, yeah, sure. I wouldn't complain about anything. No! $90! 90! You could buy like five Hollow Knights with that. And you'd have a totally better time! Pokemon is the largest media franchise in the entire world. Pokemon is one of the biggest selling game franchises of all time. These are not starting points. This is a company with over 20 years experience making Pokemon. And they have more than enough money to hire people to fill in the blanks. Stop giving them a free pass to make dog shit. I am accepting of all opinions on this game. If you liked it, that's fine. I don't care. If you like the weird, the chaotic new turn system, I can see that. If you like the light and strong style, okay, whatever, that's fair enough. It's pretty typical RPG stuff. But if you say this is a good starting point, I will find your grandma's grave and throw eggs at it until you realize you're wrong. But reviewers don't actually have any direct impact on the making of a game. No, they just sit around and complain in their ivory towers of cynicism. Oh, 
my god, you guys look so small down there. So to say reviewers are at fault for PLA's problems would be complete hogwash. Because the real murderer is Game Freak, and their weapon of choice, rampant copying of Breath of the Wild. Like, it's wild. Hey! <laughs> I'm not the first person to point this out, but this game strangely copies a lot from Breath of the Wild. It takes from Breath of the Wild in the most obvious yet easily missable ways. From the piano rolls in the music, to the Sheikah slate, to the little boo-boo sound effects that happen every 40 seconds, to the entire idea of using the open world to shake up a stale ass formula. Paraglider bird, climbing, sneasel, cutscene, cutscene. Look at the switch icon for Breath of the Wild. Now look at PLA. It's a mirror. It's one and the same. I'm, I'm seeing doubles. And yeah, these might seem like a bit of a stretch in a vacuum, but like everything else with this game, when looked at from a bird's eye view, paints a damning picture. And that's the reason for all of these problems. Because PLA wasn't made for any other reason than to cash in off of Breath of the Wild's success. But that's probably a complete freaking lie, am I right? Like they make, they don't make main games for money. They make games because they love them. They, they love them, like love them. But to deny that the game freaks are not the true murderers of this game and franchise would be to lie to you. Because the rampant copying of Breath of the Wild speaks to a larger problem at Game Freak. They don't give a shit. Now to say that they don't care is actually to say another lie, because I don't know if they don't care, but they, they clearly make it look like they don't care. While I couldn't find any hard data on how much the crack team at Game Freak budgeted for this pile of bile, just looking at the game tells you they could probably budget a little bit more. Because one of the biggest problems at Game Freak is the size of their team, for the amount of projects they work on. The big chief himself says that the core team that made Pokemon Sword and Shield had around 170 to 200 people. Which sounds like a lot until I say Red Dead 2 should have been renamed Red Dead 2000 people worked on this game. <laughs> but that's like comparing this statue of a monkey's balls to the Empire State's woman. Pokemon would be so hard to make. You need animations for every Pokemon. You need sprites for every Pokemon. You need goddamn models for every Pokemon. You need models for every move. You need animations for every move. You need every animations for every move that animates to every animate in Pokemon anime. It's a lot of animations, dude. You need animations for them to walk around, animations for them to swim, animations for them to attack, animations for them to heal, animations for them to idle. It's just, and again, you're not just doing like one animation for one guy who just, I heard they're reforming the Dawn Guard. Might join up myself. No, you need to do that 1,000 times. The sheer amount of Pokemon and Pokemon moves and Pokemon trainers and 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 the world and El Pokemon characters makes making Pokemon games a logistical nightmare. Shout out to that one video. That's really good. Watch that video. Watch mine first though. And they make it even worse with their Activision ass, Call of Duty ass, FIFA fucking 23 ass looking release schedule. Keep in mind that not only are Game Freak releasing two big big Pokemon games this year, they've been releasing two games a year. For a, for a while. Making something good takes time or the labor pool to spread the workload out effectively so you can make it in a year. Game Freak thinks both of those are for pussies. The CEO brags about lacking a smaller dev team, meanwhile probably crunching their contract workers. And that's likely why these games have so many problems. Cause you're trying to build a mansion with two people when you've got enough wealth to hire the whole of New Zealand. Most of the problems and the problematic design philosophies in this game were in the previous 3D games. So why will they be fixed now? The graphics have sucked ever since the 3DS came out and I've seen the trailer for Scarlet and Violet. Breaking news, we have a live reaction to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet trailer. That looks like a mascot for gaming chairs. Yeah, guy in the chat, you're kind of right. It sort of does remind me of a uh, diaper. Yeah. This is like seeing one of those grandpa looking babies and having to pretend that it doesn't look like it came out of a butthole. I'll be honest. When I said I wasn't going to talk about graphics, I lied to you. I know, I'm not too proud of it, you know. In fact, I've actually been gaslighting you this entire time. Everything I've talked about is important. Everything is factors as to why this game is bad, you know. It's, um, I'm sorry. That you fell for it. <laughs> I've saved this point until last because it's the point of most people's criticisms of PLA, but it's also the point defenders keep downplaying the most. But the graphics are terrible. 
and that means something. Here's Breath of the Wild, and here's PLA. Also remember, the Breath of the Wild is a Wii U game ported to the Switch. Legends Arceus has literally no excuse to look this bad compared to a five-year-old Wii U game. The facial animations look like a Zelda game from 1998. There's weird textures everywhere that look like they haven't even loaded in yet. There's disgustingly pixelated edges to absolutely everything. And those stupid expressions make me want to gouge my eyes out. Ooh. Blimey, mate. I'm losing brain cells just looking at you. But everyone keeps saying the graphics don't matter because the gameplay is so new and fresh. Meanwhile, I feel like a crazy person because I've just spent an entire Valorant game breaking down how hollow and unimpressive and repetitive it feels. And it would be lying to say that graphics don't matter. It would be so disingenuous to say that graphics don't matter because they do. Hades is a game of perfect strokes of a brush and God of War is a game with facial animations so realistic, I literally thought Kratos was my dad. This is a quote from the art director of Hades. We value artistic integrity and excellence in artistic craft, but we're first and foremost a game design led team. Yeah, good graphics don't make a good game, but bad graphics don't equal good gameplay either. And this narrative that graphics don't matter because PLA has such fresh, innovative gameplay is completely false. Because this game is just a Skinner box full of nostalgia. Graphics do matter. Because a company that is willing to ship out a game that looks like this doesn't give a rat's ass about any of this other crap. I'm sorry, I've got one last confession. At the start of the video, I lied to you. Pokemon Legends Arceus is a bad game because it has bad graphics. And with that, I think I've completed all five stages of grief and come to accept the death of Pokemon. Let's take a seat. PLA is a very messy game that does a lot, but does it all with the amount of quality I put into cleaning my room. Yes, it's a good starting point for a 30 year old franchise and one of the highest selling video game series of all time. The problems with this game, like the problems of Pokemon games before it, will continue to exist. However, I don't care anymore. But more importantly, and I'm actually gonna sit up straight for this one, this video is sponsored by all these lovely people who have donated or subbed to the Patreon during the making of this video. Genuinely cheers. Thank you so much to Carter Whitehead, Kazuma, and Google Translate tells me this is Ancestral Alex. So if you wanna be like these absolutely lovely, angelic gamer god, just freaks of nature, just ugh, Fortnite kings, head over to the Patreon. Also could just go to the Patreon to get the exclusive content. Just saying. There's exclusive content up there. It's pretty dope. Thank you very much for sponsoring this video, everyone who has and will. Um, I'm going to go eat some glue now. <laughs> this is fucking fashion. Look, this is fashion. Look at this. Look at my fucking drip, son. What the fuck?